Hey, what's up everybody? And today again, I have something a little bit different. Recently, I've been doing a lot of projects in a lot of different fields uh, than specifically RC Plane. For example, in the uh, LEGO Car series. And now what I've done is I've built a wind tunnel. I went through a couple different versions of the wind tunnel, um, but it didn't really take me that long to eventually come up with this design that you see here. I actually only used a little bit of wood, uh, some duct tape obviously, uh, some plexiglass, and cardboard for the entire materials list. So it was very, uh, just stuff that you find around your garage, and it didn't require a lot of uh, special materials at all. It actually took me a surprising amount of time uh, to figure out how to build a wind tunnel correctly, and after a little bit of researching, I found that the propeller should be actually spinning on the opposite end and the opposite way that you would think it would spin uh, when you think of a wind tunnel. For those of you that don't know, uh, the wind flows this way, uh, which would make sense uh, because the airfoil is facing forward that way. However, the uh, motor and propeller are back here. They're way in the back in this little tunnel here, this little duct. And the airflow still goes that way. So what it does is it sucks the air through the front, brings it out the back, and I'm assuming that the main reason for that is because of eliminating turbulence. And I can see why. When I tried uh, putting the propeller on the other side over here, and having the airflow directly be like blowing against the, the airfoil, it just sort of flapped all over the place. And then I realized I felt uh, the airfoil a little bit, and uh, it was very, very turbulent. And now when I turn on the motor back here, I notice that the airflow is much smoother coming through the test chamber and uh, making a more evenly flowing and more accurate wind flow. One thing this wind tunnel doesn't have is a large air intake uh, with an air smoother. So generally, uh, with other wind tunnels, you have this big, almost um, triangular shaped piece out here that opens up and then you have a little screen right here that smooths the airflow and then it, it compresses it and I guess speeds up the airflow a lot. However, I didn't really need it for this experiment here as the motor provided enough thrust to get the airfoil to actually generate lift. Another thing that I noticed is this duct right here improves performance a lot over just like an open uh, sort of circular design that I tried before with the propeller was in a chamber that was much bigger than the actual set of the, of the propeller and included a lot of extra space. Now having this duct, I assume, speeds up the airflow and makes it more concentrated in that area. That's what I've heard um, in some of the, my research that I've done. Obviously, I'm not an expert on aerodynamics or anything like that. Uh, this is just a really cool little learning especially project that um, I'm glad it turned out as well as it did. And it's super cool when it works, and I'll show that demonstration in a little bit. For now, let's go over the structural and electrical components that I used in this build. Of course, the main and the coolest part of this build is the actual test chamber itself. And what I've got here is I uh, cut the wing, the airfoil, off of uh, the wing of the, I think it was the WTF plane. Yeah. And I fitted a wooden rod through it. If you actually see back here, I have this connected here. So if I turn it, it moves it up and down, and it can move freely like that. And um, so that was pretty easy. I, I was pretty lazy about that. So I could put really any different type of airfoil in there, maybe even some small little models. And then I have um, the servo connected to a control rod and a control service back here, which I didn't see a lot of uh, wind tunnels have. And so actually, I have this all connected up to my transmitter here, and I can move it up and down. So when you actually turn the fan on, it's like a little video game. You try to keep the wing stable. And I was also thinking of adding like little slots here. Um, so you could slide the wing up and down uh, the display. And that would be pretty cool to do too. The motor that I've got on here is also from my WTF plane. It's a 300 class uh, Blue Wonder. I believe that's a 6030 uh, by three propeller. Uh, it doesn't really matter what propeller size, as long as you get like around, I don't know, 10 ounces of thrust. <clears throat> I think this one actually has around 14 to 16 ounces of thrust, so it's quite a bit, a little bit more than I need, but it makes the battery last a long time. It'll 10 amp ESC, receiver, battery, and then it's all hooked up 
And then this goes right to the servo, uh, and it's connected to the wing over there. This entire thing is made out of cardboard, and it's actually really durable and solid. I can actually reach over here oops, and uh, pick up the entire thing, just throw it around and stuff. Very, very portable, very small. Um, this actually be good for like a, maybe a science fair display or something like that. Um, got the plexiglass over here. Pretty much just cardboard boxes really taped together with a little bit of glue, and then I got this. Um, to keep the motor mount there, this little wooden dowel. I actually had to cut this hole here because the propeller was too large um, to fit um, entirely inside of that without scraping the box, and that doesn't seem to hinder the performance very much. Now I'll demonstrate uh, the different ins and outs that this wind tunnel has, how it works, and uh, what you can do with it. So here's a view of the airfoil, and um, I'll go ahead and I'll turn the motor on. <laughs> see there uh, when I moved the servo up and down like that um, it did change the angle and the pitch of the wing so it works uh, very very well actually and a lot better than I had hoped um, after doing a lot of balancing especially um, over here in the front with the wooden dowel I had to eventually just throw it right in the center of gravity spot and uh, modify the airflow to take it apart because it wasn't balancing correctly but once I had that right and I got the center of gravity all down uh, it worked out really well So there you go, I think it's going to about wrap it up for this video. Um, if you guys have any other questions or comments about this design, or if you want to build one or anything like that, I can give you some uh, more specific dimensions and stuff like that that I used. Um, I, none of it was really super specific. As long as you have a motor, uh, you got the tunnel here, the duct, and then you got the, the test chamber. That's really all you need, as long as it's, it's pretty airtight then it's pretty much good to go. Anyway, thanks you guys for watching this uh, overview of my simple wind tunnel. Um, more to come in the future, more to come. I got some content. No more planes as of right now, at least that I've designed and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do some more stuff, maybe with uh, my Delta Wings and my combat stuff, my little mini ones up here. These ones, they're really fun. Still working, still out there. Um, I took a little break for the uh, Lego RC cars and, you know, finals week and stuff like that. It was a, it was a big deal. Actually, the video that's probably coming the most soon is um, an overview on this gas bike here that I built. And this thing is awesome. I love it. It's so much fun to ride. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be doing an overview and ride video of that. Uh, most likely coming out after this video at some point. I'll see when I have time. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.